So you have some things you wanted to share about your uh, experience? Yeah, uh, well, one of the things I found very interesting and most surprising was the uh, significance of the fluid techniques and the changes uh, that they made. Both the first treatment and the fourth treatment. The first treatment, all we did was fluid techniques and immediately there was an increase in strength, which I found very shocking, frankly. So today, I was planning on uh, treating the fluid dynamics inside, the, um, inside Jennifer's wrist, and I think now we need to anyways, <laughs> because things are getting irritated. So uh, the technique is basically, I interlace my thumb with her thumb here, and so you can see my hand is going to be lining up right across uh, her flexor retinaculum. So I have a nice contact right across her carpal tunnel. And then I interlace my fingers of my other hand this way. My hand contact is very light. I'm just compressing her, her skin and her superficial fascia. So I'm just compressing tissue that's only about a millimeter into her. Um, so I compress that tissue and then there's a point at which you know, when I've compressed it very slightly, it starts to resist me. And then I allow the tissue to push my hand away. And so the tissue pushes my hand away, and my hand comes out, and there's a point at which, if my hand is to go any further, I'm actually sort of, I'm not just leaving the surface of her skin, but I'm, I'm not being pushed out by the tissue anymore. So I alternate compressing the tissue and letting it recoil, just in the skin and superficial fascia layer. We've been working for about five minutes now with um, Jennifer's wrist and what's happened is that the uh, fluid flow through the superficial fascia is uh, really proceeding very nicely. As that flow starts to happen you can feel fluid moving through the superficial parts of your, um, of your client's wrist then um, it's common to sort of naturally change the, um, the dynamics. So instead of doing a straight compression and recoil to make it gross and move my hands largely, um, I'll compress distally and then I'll roll that compression in a proximal way. So then I start sort of milking in this kind of way. So I'm just doing it in a large way with my hands to show you that um, now I'm doing it in a in a real-time <laughs> way with my hands. And you can see my hands are moving quite considerably now and that's because there's probably two or three millimeters of um, into underneath the skin that the fluid is moving nicely through. So again I'm not thinking too much about the carpal tunnel yet I'm just thinking about catching a wave and moving this wave of fluid um, through the wrist. I'm going to continue this for another five minutes at least. We've been working for about another five minutes and at this point the fluid is moving really nicely through the wrist and hand and you can see that I'm doing a bit of a rotary movement. So as I compress with my uh, dorsal side hand I'm allowing the wrist to extend a little bit. And I'm rolling my force around now and she's flexing. So again, I'm continuing with this pumping with a little bit of rotary movement as well. As we're proceeding in this way, it's become clearer to me that, um, that Jen's got really good fluid dynamics. She's, a, she's an athlete and you know, fluid moves well through her body in a general sense. Um, so that's great. But um, there really feels to be a, an area of congestion in the carpal tunnel. So everything is moving nicely. <laughs> the back of the uh, wrist, even the carpal bones, the backs of the carpal bones are starting to float like little buoys in the river floating in the summertime. Little Javex bottles, hopefully they were emptied and washed before someone threw them in the river. So our carpal bones are kind of floating and, and, and really um, moving in this delightfully buoyant way, dorsally. But anteriorly, it feels like they're... Um, Instead of those, uh, those Javex boys being held down by maybe like a little bit of nylon rope onto a little anchor on the bottom, there's this whole um, viscous kind of muck or mud that's, um, that's holding on to the carpal bones anteriorly. It feels like I need to engage things slightly differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm holding on to wrist and on to Jen's wrist lightly, 
but I'm just now I'm going to drag it up towards the ceiling a little bit to create a little bit of um, distraction in the wrist. It's probably just, I don't know, 10, 15 grams of distractive force. It's very light. And as I do that, now I can feel that um, all those Javex balls that have been wiggling nicely, they're all connected to each other. And I'm just engaging the matrix of, of fibrous tissue, the, you know, the different interosseous ligaments that hold the uh, carpals together. And we're going back to our rolling type of uh, manipulation. So I'm allowing my phenar eminence to massage inside the carpal tunnel and hydraulically change the pressures there. So I'm not like forcing that fluid out, I'm just compressing it a little bit and still I'm letting it recoil. Yeah, mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, maybe if we can drain those um, compartments, mm -hmm. then you're going to be less, yeah, actually. And then on Wednesday we came in and said, oh, in an ideal world, we wouldn't be treating me today because, you know, we're pressed for time, blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, I did a lot of fluid techniques, and at that time I was having quite a lot of symptoms in terms with pressure, a lot of tenderness, and um, that made a huge difference. I was able to ride for, you know, 50 kilometers afterwards and uh, very little discomfort. So I think it's really important to emphasize the significance of doing those fluid techniques because as massage therapists, and myself being one, they're boring. They're totally boring, and they're not sexy. We like to do, you know, see what we're, that we're getting in there and doing stuff and making a change. Well, these very subtle techniques make made a huge difference. So you admit your own prejudice Absolutely. as a therapist against that, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So what do you, when you do it, it makes, yeah, it makes yeah. a difference. What would you suggest saying to a client then who feels similarly impatient with, with the process? Ah, just that what we need to do is to normalize the fluid in here and to get this, this swelling out and it's, it takes time and it's going to feel like we're not doing a lot so just take, you know, relax and do some deep breathing and you'll notice the difference afterward. The proof is in the pudding, basically, right?